real talk. I'm going to have a real transparent moment for a second, okay? So I'm like premenopausal. I hit my 40s and like my hormones started going crazy and I started going to this doctor. She gave me these natural like uh, testosterone supplement like to boost my testosterone because my testosterone level was too low. That's what was off with me, yeah. which is not normal, but it was off. This testosterone hit me, y'all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> y'all ain't hearing me, okay? Yeah, welcome to our life. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, boom. I was like, it's like, yeah. I'm like, this is, I mean, Where can I get it next? Uh, uh, <laughs> and obviously my levels were super, Not this was not on a man's level. Like yeah. uh, an average man has 20, 10 to 20 times the amount of testosterone in their bloodstream than a woman. Yeah. So the level I was at was just kind of like extra healthy woman. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Imagine me back in my twenties, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Yeah. I'm on a ride right I'm, I mean, my husband was looking like a whole snack. Yeah. Okay. I'm looking at him cleaning. I'm looking at him bending over. Yeah, nah, yeah. I mean, I'm looking at him like I will jump you right now. Yeah. Like, where are the kids at? Yeah, right. Yeah. And I'm like, this is how men feel. <laughs> and it and but ten to twenty times. Yeah. And I told my girlfriends, I was like, y'all, I have a whole different level of sympathy for men right now at this point. <laughs> because I would like be scrolling across Facebook and I would see some fine dude and I'd be like, ooh. Duh. And I was like, what are you doing, Duh. Rebecca? Like, what is wrong with you? You know, yeah. like I it you're literally like super sexually charged up, right? Yeah. And so What's difficult with you guys is what attracts you to someone is going to be the physical to yeah. even initially talk to them. But then the one thing that gets you in trouble is that you're sexually attracted to them and you want to have sex. Mm-hmm. And trying to be casual and not lead someone on and not get too deep into something, that doesn't go together, right? right? So the very thing you're driven to do, driven biologically, I don't care what your faith is, I don't care who you are biologically men are driven to have sex and that little testosterone test i'm telling you guys about right now driven it is part of your makeup god made you this way right and there's just no way around it and so you guys have it is is rough if you're really not wanting to go there this is why you have men that will be sleeping with one woman but they're dating other women but they keep that one woman they're sleeping with and women don't understand that like wait but I, but so one of the things i've learned over time is that a lot of the time men will still be sleeping with somebody all the way up while they're dating someone they're very serious with but if they're abstinent and the women who are celibate and abstinent don't want to hear that Mm. right because that is like what's wrong with these men they're not built like us yeah i mean at the end of the day sometimes women get that the knowledge that oh he was still sleeping with his ex or still sleeping with someone all the way up till we got engaged or all this is really common you guys Mm -hmm. and it's the kind of stuff that breaks women's hearts because they're like how could he love me how could he be we be you know ready to be getting married and he was still that drive mm. you know and it i i look at any man that abstains based on my feelings from when i was hopped up on testosterone, okay any man that abstains i i feel like you you're on a whole nother level <laughs> you're just on a whole nother level it, it there's going to have to be spiritually mentally emotionally you're going to have to be so deeply committed and to that thing, you know what I'm saying? It's going to have to be, it's spiritual. Yeah. It's going to have to come from something real deep to overcome that natural drive that God puts in you to have sex. Mm. So that's why there's just not a whole lot of men that are abstinent, period. Yeah. Now that's a, I think what you keep on going back to that I think is just so powerful is to be able to understand the uniquenesses of each gender. I feel like that's just, that's, a, that's an education that a lot of people really, yeah. really lack, especially because- you have like romance novels and movies and TV shows that create these false caricatures of right. these individuals in which these are not what who they really are in real life. No. So for let, let's say a young woman right now mm-hmm. and she says, you know, okay, my expectations might be a little unrealistic. Mm-hmm. Like what would you say are some healthy, realistic expectations that she should have for men in general? I would say that women need to date a little bit more like men. Women need to date a little bit more like men. Um, lead a little bit more towards being attracted to someone initially, right? 
Um, because when you're married or when you're in a committed relationship, you are going to hit hurdles. You're going to hit, you're going to go through really difficult times. And if you're not really attracted to your partner, I'm talking about on a sexual level, a physical level, if you're not attracted to them, you'll want to walk away. But there, there, that sexual physical element is so crucial in a relationship because it keeps you connected, mm-hmm. keeps you bonded to someone. So if women would lean a little more towards the physical and say, oh, he's cute. He's got, I, I call it the kissable test, right? It's not that he has to be like Boris Kojo, mm-hmm, right? Yeah. But if you're sitting across the table from him at a date, and you look at him and his energy and his vibe and his look is the would be enough that you could say, I could see myself kissing him. Like I could <laughs> yeah. see myself kiss him, right? Yeah. Don't go there with sex and the whole shebang. I'm yeah. saying just don't imagine him without his clothes on. You don't yeah. have to do all that. I'm saying just kissable. Because that's for a woman, the at that initial kind of litmus to say, is there an initial attraction that could be built on? Because women truthfully fall in love with what they hear and how a man makes them feel. It's not, it's not mostly physical. It's really how a man makes a woman feel. The problem is a lot of the time that a man doesn't even get that chance to kind of win a woman over mm-hmm. because <laughs> he doesn't, she does, she's so closed off because she's he's not my type. Yeah. So now he can't get in her ear and get in her head to eat, to where she's you all of a sudden you start looking real cute you know mm-hmm. when you get in when you start talking to him you start you give me you, a chance give I, me that's a all chance. I ever asked for Rebecca. now listen <laughs> listen I because when I was single I, I had a couple dating experiences where I, I there was one guy I, I dated and and for initial looks wise I was like mm, mm, mm. you know I ain't feel but he was smart he was a businessman. Anything with business for me is like we we go together. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like yeah. I love talking about business, and it, and so our conversations just he would get me with this conversation. Man, I kept dating him and dating him, and and next thing you know, he's looking cuter and cuter mm-hmm. to me because he, his whole energy and his spirit was so beautiful, and it was just like we just vibed. And I'm sure people would look at us and be like, how did they, did he, <laughs> you know, I mean, real talk, right? Yeah. Like that's how you see, when you see people that are, aren't really, you know, they're mismatched or not really that looking that compatible physically, you're like, how did that happen? But I really liked him, right? But it taught me a lot about the female brain to understand that when we emotionally connect with someone, they immediately begin to become more physically attractive to us. Mm-hmm. So my husband's like the most beautiful man on earth to me, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, ooh, okay, <laughs> okay? Like, that's my boo. <laughs> but so if a woman would kind of lean a little bit more towards physical while while lowering some of those expectations around education and finances um, to say, you know, I think easing up a little bit on such strict expectations around exactly how much money he makes or exactly how tall he has to be or exactly how much education he has. I mean, I've met so many men over the years that didn't even have high school degrees or a bachelor's degree, but they had five times as much money as me, yeah. right? Because nowadays with entrepreneurs and everything else, I mean, it's not even really about education. But there's a lot of young women or in women period who will just cut a man off the soon. Oh, he doesn't have a bachelor's degree. I can't date him. What? What does that have to do with us connecting and being able to have a great life together? It has nothing to do None of that stuff matters. Yeah. But this also goes to my point why I think a lot of the time women and men are now getting more into their 40s before you find this. Like my, I was 39 when I met my husband and I've been married previously, but I had ne- I've never loved a man the way I love my husband. And, and it, this is like the greatest love of our lives, right? Like that, that real life love, soulmate love. And, but we we both agree we wouldn't have been ready for this in our 20s. You know, we wouldn't we wouldn't have been able to connect. Your priorities are so different when you're younger. So you're you're trying to fit your ideal model of what you how you want things to be. And so but as you get older 
what you want changes, what's really important changes. And, and so now it's like, well, you don't really need to have to have a booty <laughs> like J-Lo. Yeah. You know, maybe if it's just a little bump, yeah. you know, if he, because she's sweet and she's cool and she's fly and she's smart and maybe a little, a little bump is good. Yeah. You know, I can deal a with a little, little bump. bump. <laughs> you know, I mean, but real talk though, right? Because a lot of the time men get those little things that they say is does it for them and like they got to have that. I had one client, I had a male client, you guys. He was big. He liked big booty Judy's. I mean, big booty Judy's. He. Who are you looking at? He was stuck <laughs> on big booties, and he couldn't. And and he, you know, it was like he had this appetite. Yeah. Right? Okay, I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying right? You just looking right at him. Like literally, it was like his thing, and yeah. there was just no getting by it. He couldn't get over it. But yet he would ba- pass up so many really great women. And the big booty Judy's weren't good for him. Like they They aren't. Because of their <laughs> bodies, they get a lot of attention from men. Mm-hmm. They get so now there's a level of entitlement. There's a level of expectation and high maintenance there that hasn't That's been so earned. It's just about body. It's it just is. about looks. It I is. mean, real talk. We know this is real, you guys. We and do so know it's real. So then you could be like this really nice, great guy, but big booty Judy's used to dating athletes. And she's used to dating men with money and they're tricking off and, you yeah. know, and, and throwing money at her. That almost happened to me in Atlanta when I, I've been here for 15, 16 years. In my 30s, you know, I started dating after I got divorced and men do the absolute most. Oh, wait, please explain. <laughs> yeah. For the female listeners, y'all, I understand. It's like I started dating, no lie. And the men, I mean. When they were really trying to get you, like really get you, they were they will do the most. They're trying to fly you here, wine and dine you, trips. I mean, clothes, shopping. I, I met this one man. I hadn't even been talking to him a week. This is back before you remember when um, emailing money first came out. Do you remember like like how you can quick pay? Yeah, yeah. That, this is back money. before the apps, you guys. Okay. This is when like with Chase Bank, you could email oh, yeah, and yeah, send yeah, yeah. money yeah, yeah, yeah. to people, right? I get this email. It's like three G's. Mm. And I'm like... Ladies, if you want to send me three G's. <laughs> <laughs> no, literally, no lie. And I mean, we'd only been talking like a week, but he'd flown back in town. He was out of town on business. He flew back in town just to have our first date with each other. He was crazy about me on the first date. And he literally sends me an email and sent me like three G's like a few days later and was like, I want you to just spend this on you. I don't spend it on the kids. Just we can't compete with that. <laughs> and literally, and listen, Not yet. <laughs> that, that had never happened to me, you guys, right? I've been married most of my life. Yeah. I, I didn't know about this single life. You know, I was like green, yeah. you know? And I'm like, this is what they, what? <laughs> You know, and of course, I really start trying to give him a chance and start trying to date him because, you know, you get it. It's hard to explain, but it's almost like. It's like an expectation. Yes. So I date him. That doesn't end up working out. Um, I date another guy, ex-athlete, every kind of imaginable luxury car, multiple properties. So we know this athlete. You know, flying around, (laughs) right? Yeah. So. That wasn't my lifestyle, but yet I'm hanging out with him. And so now you're in these houses, you're in these cars, yeah. you're on these flights, you're doing all. And, and, and then the part of me, that's the God, right? The spirit inside of me. I was really liking him. I was really digging him. Right. But then I'm like, wait a minute, you know, I, because they shine you on so quick, you kind of can lose focus on what's real or what's important and I start asking questions right I'm like so you know where's this going what did it and I didn't like his answer <laughs> right and I was like no nah, this this ain't going nowhere right yeah. this is not what I'm looking for and I, I broke it off with him not that we were together like boyfriend and girlfriend even though that's definitely how it felt what I really began to realize is there's probably nine other women just like me that he's doing this with Mm -hmm. and this little bit of money or whatever he's doing with me is nothing to him when people have money ain't checking if you got it it, exactly like the $3,000 from the dude that was nothing to him 
Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So sometimes it, as women, when you're not used to that, guys, can you imagine being a, a young lady and men start doing treating you this way and doing these kind of things? You you now start to have these levels of expectation. I'll never forget after the the athlete guy. I um I was on the phone with my guy friend, the player, dude, yeah, right? Yeah. He was like my best guy friend, yeah, right? Yeah. And I was like, I had gone out on a date that night with a guy who was like an engineer and a professor. I like smart yeah, guys, yeah. right? <laughs> and so, you know, he was like, oh, how'd the date go? Da, da, da. And I was like, mm, you know, it's okay. And, and he was like, why was, what, what, you know, you don't sound too excited. You didn't like him. I said, well, he, you know, he drives a Ford Explorer and... Mm. And I was like, you know, he just, you know, he seems like a nice guy, but I'm just not really feeling it. And he was like, what did you say? <laughs> I said, you know, he seems like a nice guy. She, he said, no, no, no. Before that, what did you say about what he drives? Yeah. I said, he drives a Ford Explorer. And he was like, Rebecca, that's not you. Mm. He's like, I don't want, he was like, he stopped me dead in my tracks yeah. and was like, No. No, no, no. And he checked me so hard and was like, that is not you. That I've never heard you talk like that before. You've never been like that. I don't want you to be like one of those women. You know, it was like that big brother almost kind of checking yeah. you for a second. And if and if he hadn't done that in that moment, I wouldn't even have realized that I was slipping over that slope. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, real talk, we get corrupted. You know, mm. and it's because the men come on so strong. And I, and next thing you know, that level of treatment or that level of lifestyle was becoming an entitled expectation that I was putting in place. I mean, I see it a lot with men because of money. Uh -huh. Because you've got the guys who have been nerds, who were you know, not popular in high school and college who didn't get the girls, but they were smart, right? Now they're coming into their late 20s and 30s. That tech done popped off, that company's popped off, or the Endeavor, whatever, right? Or their their corporate, um, you know, aspirations have come to fruition, you know, and they're doing really well. And now they don't have the social skills, right? To be able to navigate women. It's not like they learned really how to do that. But the success and the money is there, and that attracts certain types of women. Mm -hmm. And so now they get corrupted because now this money now gives them access to women that would never even give them a second look if it wasn't for status. Mm -hmm. And they get messed up too, and they get hurt because, you know, now they say, I just want a, a real woman, and a woman's going to love me. But yet now you want someone who looks like a fitness model. Mm. But who would, and I, and I would always ask men that. If it wasn't for status or money, who would genuinely like you for you to where if tomorrow everything was gone, who's going to be in that studio or one bedroom apartment with you and waking up looking at you, loving you for you and grateful for you? I've been saying this for you. I've been saying this for you. But yeah. most oftentimes, truthfully, that's someone who is very much on your same level. And, and men and women don't really like that. They... Everyone's reaching higher than where who they are or where they are at currently. How do you know your level? Um, I would say it takes a lot of brutal honesty, right? Look at your own financial status. Look at your own credit score. Look at your own looks. My husband and I, when we met each other, it was very comparable. We fell in love, you know, in the middle of recovering from bad divorces. He was probably about 10, 15 pounds overweight. I used to only be about 10, 15 pounds away, right? Like we were very comparable. I mean, very much on the same general level, right? And we fell in love and in spite of things not being perfect in each of our lives and saying, okay, we really, but we genuinely love each other for who we are. Now, of course, more money comes and more everything comes and you're great, but you, you love the person you're with because it wasn't built on, status and money and you know image and all of that stuff so truth be told you know i think men need to be needed like you know at the end of the day i think that what works for most men and this is why things are so difficult now um is that men still need to be in a position where they are provider protector priest 
they, they're covering. Men are built to lead. They're built to, um, to, be, to be depended upon. There's an, an innate need you guys feel. You never feel better than when you are needed and you're helping in some capacity for those that you love, that you are doing for them and they rely on you. And I believe after this next book I write, I'm probably going to end up writing a book that's about marriage because Mm -hmm. like I've mentioned, it's been an adjustment for me, right? My husband pays 90% of the bills and the money I make, we use as investments and goes into savings. But there's, I believe that that's kind of difficult for women nowadays, you guys, right? Like most women are going to struggle to say, we're going to really live on your income, which means our lifestyle is on your level of your income. But that innately makes a man feel like a man, Mm. right? Yes. (laughs) My husband is like, I'm the man, right? And and then it also, I have an innate need to be protected. Women have an innate need to be provided for. And so there's an innate need that's met for me. But I, but if I'm acting like superwoman and independent, like I don't need him, then my need's not getting met and his need is not getting met either. Mm-hmm. So what's difficult nowadays is that women are making so much money that now the expectation, the average man, I think, with a bachelor's degree makes like $50,000 a year. Average. Which means these expectations that women have that men should be making six figures yeah, maybe if he's like 45. Yeah, yeah. But in your 20s and 30s? Yeah. That is not your average. It's not even your average 45-year-old, guys. Mm-hmm. It's so it's it it becomes difficult in these scenarios for men to be able to be men and women to be women because even though our society and culture has changed so much, the needs we have innately as men and women haven't changed mm. so much. Chris is just shit. Yeah. I don't even know what to say. Nah, that's good. I mean, I, 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 I know feeling like this. A lot of knowledge, a lot of things to think about. Um, yeah. I don't know. I mean, just like being around certain events that we've been over, mm-hmm. um, just looking in a room full of women that just like, they just want to be loved, you know? They do. And if sometimes I see what some of the speakers be saying and I see their reactions and it breaks my heart. Yeah. Like sometimes it's like, dang, like that is true. I do do that. Or yes, this guy has hurt me and vice versa. And it's just like, man, like the need for love is so real. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, you right. know, I'm trying to like, and we're trying to get like people as much knowledge mm-hmm. as they can possibly get because um, we need it, you know? And I don't like, I don't like seeing that room full of women just like, ah! Well, I think the majority of time men and women friend zone their perfect, the person that would be practically perfect for them. The person that loves you and loves you for you. And a lot of the time that person gets kind of friend zoned. and Because they don't look good enough? Because the, the physical, yeah, maybe it doesn't fit exactly what you imagine for yourself physically. Or for women, it's the finances and, you know, kind of the status and all that stuff plays into it. Um, but your best partner in life and who's going to love you is going to be your best friend, yeah. you know? And- how do you balance that with, I'm sorry for cutting you off, like, how do you balance that with, like, sexual attraction? Because it's like, obviously, like, I have, Chris is one of my best friends, but I'm not sexually attracted to Chris, you know? Like, John <laughs> right. Mark's one of my best friends, but so, like, you said, like, a part of it is a sexual attraction, mm-hmm. so then, if there is a woman who's like, yeah, she's she can't be your best friend, but there's just nothing there. It's like looking at a man. Yeah, you can't do it. Okay, cool. Just, just yeah, say. don't don't <laughs> try to do not try yeah. to make it be there if it's not if it's if you need chemistry. Yeah. You do, but a lot of the time, what people do psychologically is close something off in their mind and not even give it a chance, and especially when it comes to women. A lot of the time they can have this guy that's like their best guy friend and they're just so closed off to it. No, he's not my type. Mm-hmm. But the moment you kind of crack that door open, it's they start to see him differently and see him in a different light. I can't tell you how many women I've known over the years who end up marrying their best friend. Mm. And they're so happy because this guy is really perfect for them, you know. Um, but I sit, I when it comes, like when I met my husband, like I'm telling you guys, on the first date, I'm looking at him like, mm-hmm. cooking, yeah. right? Like, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. 
And that goes a long way. So guess what? I'm not going to be quite as picky about finances. I'm not going to be quite as picky about baby mama and, and his credit score or because at the end of the day, I like who I wake up to every morning. I wake up looking at my husband like, Ooh, <laughs> I get to wake up to you every day. Yeah. I really like who I wake up to every day. We really vibe and we have fun. We have fun doing nothing. Yeah. We have, you know, our first dates were like picnics and like ice creams and you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, we yeah. just had fun together. And if you've been dating a lot, you know, I had dated a lot. That's how I became a relationship expert. I just went on dates and listened to men. Mm -hmm. Right. And that is so precious. It is so, I mean, you can't put, it's priceless. If you just can, if you just genuinely like someone, you like their energy, you like their smile, you like being around them. That's the kind of foundation you can build with somebody. Like at the end of the day, I mean, you can get money together, right? You can build your credit together. All those things are, you can do whatever you set your mind to do, especially as a couple, two are more powerful together. You can yeah. do whatever you want to do. It's more important that the chemistry, the love, the connection, the likability, the fun factor is there because life is hard enough. You're out here trying to make this money working, you know, your parents getting older. I mean, you're going to deal with a lot of stuff as you get older. And it's like your partner needs to be someone who makes that a little easier as you're going forward. Man, there's been so much wisdom mm -hmm. <laughs> and so much, so much great now that you provided for us. So we want to be respectful for your time. So if there's a message in closing that you would like to give men and women that you learned from your years of not only coaching and encouragement, but also from your own relationships and your own marriages, what would be some of your, your best tips of being able to find the right person to spend your life with? I would say work on yourself. Be the happiest version of you that you can be. Do what you love. Be fulfilled personally. Then as you vet and qualify and meet people, you're entertaining people through dating. Determine whether that's a fit for who you are and where you're going. If you could see yourself enjoying life with this person, give it a chance, right? But give each person a chance as you get to know them instead of feeling like it has to meet so many different expectations uh, based on things that are not real. At the end of the day, my husband and I wake up to each other every day. We go to sleep with each other every day and the outside world doesn't really matter because it's just us. Because at the end of the day, you only have each other. It's us against the world. And that's the kind of ride or die love, the type of connection, commitment that you want is to be able to go through life with somebody that you know genuinely gets you, understands you, and loves you. Which means that there's an element of friendship and love, unconditional love, that comes into that in the same way you have for your friends. And, and family, right? Not just friends, but family. We don't just write people off. When we love them, and they're, especially when they're blood, you don't, you, don't, you don't just walk away, right? You are there for the long haul. You're there to make it work. And if we can approach love and relationships and from that perspective to open ourselves up to love on that greater level, I believe that our romantic relationships would be you know, much deeper, much more fulfilling. That's awesome. I want that. <laughs> so, we're, 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 Rebecca, where can they find you at? Where can they reach out to you and connect with you at? I am Rebecca Lynn Pope on everything. You can just Google it and you can go from there. You yeah. can find me on YouTube, Instagram, everything. Just Rebecca Lynn Pope. That's perfect, awesome. Perfect. Rebecca, thank mm -hmm. you so much for coming on the show. Welcome. Just so much wisdom, guys. Yes. Remember how we get down the podcast, guys. Make sure you go to Instagram, Twitter, wherever you can. Access Rebecca. Send her a message. Let her know what about the podcast stood out to you guys. As always, leave a review on iTunes to let us know how you're really enjoying the podcast. And Chris, I enjoyed myself today. No, it was really good, man. She was amazing. One of my favorites. <laughs> yeah. One of my favorites for sure. So as I said to begin the podcast, it's your boy Hafiz. Chris, the star of the show, baby. And we are joined by... Rebecca Lynn Pope. And we are the roommates, guys. As always, guys, don't forget to reach out. We love you. We love you. Love you. We see you on Thursday on Patreon. Ooh. And adios. Woo.